So we are prepping to put in the flooring and we're about to do the leveling compound now. So I've got everything out of here now. Uh, I've gone around and caulked all the seams or any cracks like at the uh, bottom plate here all the way around just to make sure it's not going to try to seep out. I've also gone around and done some foam in places where the gaps were larger. And I still need to go around and uh, like I'm going to tape off around the oven. Um, just so I don't have to take that out. Same thing with the dishwasher. And now I'm using this laser to mark a level line. Uh, just throughout the house and I'm using this little uh, measuring stick here and I'm going around and checking the different heights and places like here's a uh, this is basically the highest point that I've found so I'm just kind of marking where the high spots are where the low spots are there's a really low spot over here in this corner But yeah, it, it makes it really easy to uh, find the high spots and low spots. So I'm mainly just going to use these as reference marks so I know where to start pouring and kind of uh, work my way from this corner over here because it's the lowest point and kind of work this way because it gets a lot higher over here and just kind of work it around and hopefully we can get it to lay out pretty smooth. All right, I've got this all primed. Everything's sealed up and uh, I think it's dry enough now for me to start. So this was my first pour, and it was the first time I've ever used self-leveling compound. I had watched a lot of videos and I thought I was pretty prepared, but um, as I found out, this material is really hard to work with. It's really sensitive to um, heat and temperature, so if it's really hot outside, you have to make sure the bags are sitting in a shaded area. You have to make sure you're using cold water, and both of those things we didn't do. The bags themselves were sitting in the sun all day, so they were hot and uh, the water was not cold and I think the temperature was in the 90s that day. So the compound started setting up and uh, became pretty much unworkable before it was able to flow out evenly. Alright so the first application of the leveling compound is cured and uh, it uh, didn't go very well, the first pour. We, the first two buckets I poured over here, um, they weren't mixed good enough, and there was some clumps in them, and they, it just hardened really quickly, and so it just was kind of impossible to work. So it kind of, that's why you see a lot of this uh, just didn't smooth out properly and it just kind of made the whole thing really stressful but um, I've reprimed this area because I'm going to add some more and I'm, I'm still a little low over in that corner so I'm gonna bring some more in and uh, just kinda let it smooth out a little bit better but for the most part it is pretty flat 
um, especially back in the kitchen area and back into the hallway that all got really nice and level and up around the island that was all good so yeah I'm gonna mix some more up and try to get the rest of this area nice and level but it did not level out nicely the leveling compound flowed not like water but like molasses might flow on the coldest day in Antarctica. It created mountains and ridges so vast that I had no other option but to rent an industrial concrete grinding machine and dust collector. I would spend the next six hours grinding down hundreds of dollars worth of leveling compound. If I had any hope of getting a level floor I would have to come up with an entirely new approach. Alright, so since the first attempt didn't work out so good, I'm back with a new plan. Uh, I got all this grinded down flat and I bought a 12-foot box screed so it gives me a perfectly straight edge and I've built these rails on either side and uh, this way I can just pull the screed along and uh, it should give me a perfectly flat surface so you can see like over here there's a uh, almost three quarters of an inch gap and pretty flat in the middle and it's kind of the same story all the way along it's it's high in the middle and then uh, low towards the edges so yeah I'm gonna get this whole section perfectly flat and level and then I will level the rest of the kitchen and stuff off of this so I just need to tape off this uh, gap here and then I'll do the primer and we can go ahead and pour the leveling compound. So this method ended up working out really good. It was uh, quite a bit of a cooler day and uh, we made sure to use cool water. So uh, the material flowed out really nicely. We didn't really have any issues. And I made sure to have enough people helping me. I had my dad helping me and then I had my brother outside uh, mixing the material. That way we could keep working it and spreading it out uh, as we went before things started to harden or anything like that and yeah it went really smoothly if only I had done it this way from the beginning it would have saved me so much time so to make these rails all I did was rip down some plywood uh, to be the same width as the box screed and then I used some scrap pieces of wood that I hot glued down to the floor uh, to secure them in place and then against the wall we just tacked in a strip with some finishing nails and then once you're done you just pop the uh, pieces of scrap wood off with a hammer comes off pretty easily but the hot glue is strong enough to hold everything in place alright so I've got this side all set up 
and I built out the forms. These are the little railings that the uh, screed is going to slide on. So it'll slide on that on this side. And over here, it'll just ride along uh, this surface that I poured yesterday since it's already level at the level I want it to be. So then under here, I'm using this little uh, aluminum angle as a little track to slide a straight edge across here. I can slide all the way down. This really isn't going to need much here, but it'll just help me kind of distribute it, distribute it evenly. And around here, same thing, have a little uh, form rail built. Then I can run the 12 foot screed all the way across, like on the other side. And then here in the middle, I just have these little uh, aluminum pieces of flat bar. So with these, I just use some hot glue and I just shim them up to the right height and uh, just built up some hot glue under there until they were uh, good and uh, strong all the way across. And then I have another one over there. And then I can just put the screed across these and uh, just slide it across. So shouldn't take much over here and the majority is gonna be up against the wall over here. You can see that it's, um, it's about an inch over there in that corner, over to three quarters over there. But it definitely starts to raise up pretty quickly. So hopefully it's not gonna to take too many bags. So here's our mixing station over here. We just have this little pitcher marked with three quarts. And uh, each bag takes two of these, so six quarts total. And uh, we go ahead and fill up three buckets. That way, just to speed it up in the beginning. And if you're gonna do this, I really recommend getting a actual mixer. Uh, it's just way easier to use, mixes it a lot better, and uh, if, you do, if you're doing a lot of bags, it's probably going to kill your half inch drill motor, so, and these are great for mixing mortar and all kinds of other stuff. So yeah, this is going to be the last pour, I've got 12 more bags. And I don't think I'm going to need all of them, so I might be returning some, but I didn't want to not have enough. So for tools, I'm just using this little rubber squeegee just to push it around. And then I did buy one of these uh, spiked rollers. I forget which size this is, but I'll put a link to it. And um, I don't think you really have to have one of these, but... It does make it a lot easier to spread. And if you have like some seams from, you know, a pour you did and uh, a fresh pour on top of an older pour, it kind of helps just blend them together. And uh, so I would go ahead and buy one. I think they're like 30 bucks, 30 or $40. And I think it's worth it. But yeah, hopefully this will be the last pour and I'll be done with this project. At least the subfloor. And I bought a pair of these spiked shoes, but I used them a couple times on the first couple pours, but they're kind of uh, hard to wear and slippery and they break and they're hard to work in. So I've just been wearing a pair of rubber boots. So yeah, I've just been wearing a pair of normal rubber boots and they seem to work just fine. As long as you work quickly and you're only standing in the wet uh, compound, then it's not going to be an issue. Hey, get out of that! Yeah, if you're going to be doing more than, I don't know, three or four bags, you're really going to need someone to be outside mixing. Um, that way you just have constant, fresh mixed compound that you can pour down. Because otherwise, especially if you're in a hot environment, it's going to cure really quickly and uh, you're gonna be screwed. That's what happened to me in the beginning. So yeah. My other shoes on. 
Very quiet. Alright, so that last pour I did, I uh, forgot to turn the GoPro on so I didn't get it on film, but um, we poured in here and then uh, into the hallway and um, it didn't go that great just because the hallway in here took a lot of, uh, a lot of bags, probably uh, I think it took like five bags just for the hallway. So some of it started setting up before it was all ready and then we just kind of got behind. And uh, by the time I got in here, uh, we were just running behind and I had like a couple buckets just waiting on me to pour and they were kind of already curing. So this pour was not very awesome and I had to do a ton of uh, work right after it was down with the trowel, just trying to get it all flat and smooth. And uh, it doesn't look very awesome, but uh, if you put the straight edge on it, it's pretty straight. It's pretty flat, so. But there was one big hump here in front of the door. Uh, it just cured on me too fast, and I wasn't able to trowel it smooth. So I had a pretty good, probably like an eighth of an inch hump. But uh, I bought this. Uh, dust shroud for a grinder, a DeWalt grinder, and uh, a diamond disc ahead of time just because I knew I was going to be doing a few touch up spots to, you know, with a grinder to smooth things out. But uh, this is the first time I used it and it worked out great. Uh, there was basically zero dust. So um, I'll put a link to this. It's expensive, it's like 80 bucks. For the shroud, so I mean, and then the uh, the disc is like, I think it was twenty, twenty five dollars. So you know, it's like a hundred dollars. But if you're going to be doing any kind of grinding, it makes it virtually dust free. So, and it's actually once you hook the vac to it, it uh, sucks it to the uh, floor, and then it makes it easy to like move it around and. Uh, it actually helps you kind of level things out because it stays suctioned to the floor. So, you know, I just went back and forth from, from level ground over to level ground over here and just kept working it and it actually leveled it out really well. All right, so now I'm going to uh, just finish cleaning up, remove a few strips of the like this aluminum track and stuff I used. I need to pour just a little bit in here and then same thing in here. I didn't quite have enough. So there's this little eighth of an inch lip here and I just wanna fill that in a little better. But I think I'm gonna be able to start laying some flooring today. So that's exciting. So it was nice to finally get around to laying the flooring down. And it's pretty easy. I used a, the same technique that another guy on YouTube uses, uh, Mr. You Can Do It Yourself. I'll put a link to his channel. He has a lot of great um, tutorials on laying down solid wood flooring, glue down wood flooring, and also a lot of really good information on self-leveling compound. But yeah, I went pretty quick. I ended up getting it done in about two days, and it came out pretty good. So for the glue, I used Boss Stick Wood Grip Plus, and you can actually get it at Lowe's, or at least it was available at my local Lowe's. And uh, it's pretty expensive. It's $200 for four gallons. So it's pretty costly, but um, from everything I've read, it's one of the best to use. It spreads really easily. It's easy to work with and easy to clean up. So we decided to spend a little bit extra money here to make it easier and go a little bit smoother. And I'll put a link to in the description to all this stuff that I used. 
If you have a uh, project coming up where you're going to need to do some floor leveling, I hope this helps you out, maybe teaches you a few things not to do, and maybe it'll convince you to just hire a professional to do it. But I can imagine I, I still ended up saving a lot of money. Uh, it took a, a while to get it all done, but I think if we paid someone to come in and pour that much leveling compound, uh, it would have been extremely expensive. So I think we saved some money. And, and what else was I going to do during the COVID lockdown? So, all right, well, that's going to be it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope maybe you learned something from it. And I know I learned a lot. And check back in the next video, and I'll, I'll talk about the wood flooring and what we used and do, like, kind of a final uh, reveal of how it turned out. And uh, I got a lot of trim and stuff to do. So we will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.